Hi there. Hi, so today I'm going to share how we can use Whisper AI to translate an audio and video source file into English. So last time I shared how we can use Whisper AI to transcribe an audio or video source. Now this time I'm going to focus on the translate function. All right, so we are using Google Colab. If you have not used Google Colab before, it's really easy to set up. You're welcome to check out this video here. All right, let's go straight to it. Now, first, we need to install Whisper AI and FFmpeg. This is all similar to when we need to transcribe an audio or video file. And then, so this is the key command where we're specifying a source audio or video file. So you can just drag and drop your source file directly to here. You just need to click on the file icon. So sometimes it's invisible and then you click on it and you can drop your source file here. In my case, it's an M4A file here. I actually recorded a short audio clip in Mandarin Chinese because that's a language I know. So now I can show you the clip right here. 大家好,今天我们一起来学习电脑编程。Then here, we're using the medium model, which is the most efficient model. We also wanted to specify the source language. So here, dash dash language and space. Here's the interesting part that we're not able to just say Italian, French, or anything directly here. We have to use something called ISO command. You have to use abbreviation of languages. You have to use a set of abbreviations, an ISO 639. In this system, every language is assigned a two-letter and three-letter lowercase abbreviations. And so in many cases, uh, we use the two-letter system. And then this table is really helpful. So we want to focus on set one, this column. Uh, you can just use MNF to find the language code you need. So Spanish here is ES, which is not surprising. And Chinese, however, here is ZA. All right, so sometimes it is not intuitive. The language abbreviation is not just the first letter of that language. Right, so we wanted to make sure we're doing the right thing. I am going to include a link of this Wikipedia page down in the description box below so you can easily reference that. Image. Now let's go back to Google Colab. And so here you might want to ask, why do I have to specify the source language when the model can automatically detect the language? Well, that's a great question because, well, it can save you quite some time. Depending on how long your source video or audio file is, it can save you at least a couple of seconds all the way to 10 minutes because the model needs to detect that source language before the transcription or translate function can kick in. And also saving a tiny little bit of power to conserve our planet. Why not? Well, if you already know the source language, of course. So here we specify this and we just run this. So I already ran it and it's a really short audio clip in my case right now. This is actually 100% accurate. So you see in this step, I am asking it to transcribe the clip, right? So I'm not asking it to translate yet. So this is not a necessary step, but I do want it to carry it out. So I want to know whether the model can understand this language well. And in this case, the answer is yes. So then I move on to the third step, which in your case, if you're only interested in translating the source language into English, you can just jump directly to this step. All right. So everything's the same other than the lost part, dash dash task, you have to specify this is a translate task, not transcribe, because transcribe is the default mode. All right. So again, the only thing you need to add to translate. All right. And it actually output it here directly since it's a super short clip. Hello, everyone. Today, we're going to learn computer programming. It is also perfect, a perfect translation. And then there are a couple of things I think is really important to know. So. If, like me, you wanted to run this transcribing task first here, 
and the model will generate a collection of subtitle files, JSON, ST, VTT. And these files will be in the source language. If you have a Spanish audio clip, it's going to be in Spanish. If it's in English, these files are going to be in English. And then if you, you have to download them before you move on to the next transcription task, if you care about saving the source subtitles. All right. So why if you run the next translate model here, another set of subtitle files, JSON, ST, and VTT will be generated. However, these files will be in the same name and replace the previous files. And these files will be all in the destination language English. All right. So number one here, you have to always save the files after every set of files are generated. And number two, it's always a best practice to specify the source language, right? Uh, so in my case today, I'm using a Chinese audio clip. So I'm specifying Chinese and then we need to refer to the ISO 639 code to find the abbreviation of your source language, right? And number three, so here's really important to know, Whisper AI can translate other languages into English, but not the other way around, right? So if you have a file that's in Chinese, Italian, French, you can translate all of them back to English, but not the other way around. You can't translate an English audio video file into Italian or French. So I hope today's tutorial is helpful to you. Let me know in the comment section below if you have any questions. And please like and subscribe if you enjoyed today's tutorial and you want to see more helpful. Have a wonderful day.